okay so let's take a look at how you can install mongodb database and mongodb compass on windows 11 so if you go to mongodb.com you will find that there is option for resource and products so go to products then community edition where we get to download the database right you can download the community server and mongodb community server compass individually or you can download single installer that would do entire job right so in my case i have downloaded both of them separately through tools in compass i have downloaded mongodb compass right? So what i'm going to do is first i'm going to download this mongodb for windows next thing i'm going to accept the license now here i'm going to choose custom then i'm going to choose folder change the drive if you need click ok click next you can install it as a service or you can simply uncheck that click next you can install mongodb compass and then click install now the progress will start it will tell you the applications to close right so let's see if you need to close them you can go with this option otherwise do not close the applications A reboot will be required right click ok right let the process complete okay as your setup is being finished you will find it will leave this wizard click finish here it will also ask you to restart or choose no to restart later now meanwhile mongodb compass is running in the background right and you can click next let everything finish right click get started now here you get to choose few settings enable automatic updates then geographic visualization crash reports right usage statistics you can disable queue product feedback disable right you can even disable automatic updates if you don't want click save now next thing as you can see here this is localhost 27017 you can either go with that or you can create a new connection right click connect now this is not connecting because we need to finish one restart so let's do that so first thing close this and go for restart okay now next thing we can do is open mongodb compass after the restart so now before we go on connecting to our mongodb database through compass what we have to do is we'll have to check whether we have existing connection we can close them because they may or may not connect so remove now next thing is going to our the program files mongodb server then bin directory copy this path then open environment variables right now add this path right by clicking now adding this path click ok exit now here what we can do open powershell as admin right and it should open something like this now one more thing left is going to d so here the d drive we have data folder and then db folder this is required because whenever mongodb runs it will dump some files here right now next thing is within powershell we type in mongod so mongod service needs to be running 
before we can do anything right now let's open mongodb compass right now here let me maximize you create new connection by clicking on this plus icon and you will have this small window appearing it will create a uri known as mongod localhost 27017 you can expand this and you can see connection string contains mongodb and its host you also have a few options like authentication which is none here you can assign and next time you can log in using that then SSL TSL TLS you can set unset there is proxy option encryption option and advanced option for read then replica default authentication database so if you are just trying this on localhost you can ignore all of this simply stick with the defaults click save and connect name this C Mongo win 11 let's have some color save and connect and as you can see we have connected to our Mongo right so as long as this particular service runs in the background we get the connection the moment that connection is removed we will come out of mongodb compass right so here you can see localhost 27017 as our localhost we can use this when connecting our code with this particular database now as you can see we have our role here configuration and option for local directory right? it's a startup log so basically this is where your data is right within these three settings next thing is we have to create a database right so what we can do click on this database and here you see we have three existing ones so we are going to ignore them now we are going to create one for ourselves so let's say if i create database by clicking on that button i will type in something like employees then collection name users right there are advanced collection options too like capped collection custom collection time series cluster collection we'll ignore this for now and simply create the database and as you can see our one more data is here employees if you click on this it will take you to this particular database and its respective collection right now here you can click on this to further expand you can import some json files or so right and that should also help you get started with the data right so let's say if i choose import and within json or csv i can select a file right so let's select a file let's go to some place where we have data so files let's see if we have users okay so we have users csv open and as you can see these are some of the users that i can import right so it's a csv file adds enough rows so click on import it will have around 400 of rows which also get into our collection so those entries becomes our documents click done right so what we have done here is we created a database we created a collection under it and we imported data and that data becomes a document now right now as you can see you can explore all of this you can view this in json format with this list option or through this curly bracket one option where you get to see something like this or you can also use tableau options if you are a typical sql user or tba who wants to see it more clearly your id string here 
is like this it's not going to be a primary key anymore it will have a separate underscore id field which will contain a unique number right then you have your first name last name email each with its type mentioned next to it right so total 400 documents we have with the data that we just imported right now you can also make use of mongo shell to access this data or even performing your operation but uh, if you're dealing with larger data it's recommended you make use of mongodb compass or any gr tool for that matter right so there are a few more options that you can explore something like aggregation right where you can check all of this the existing you see 400 documents in collection you also get to preview them right and you can run the aggregator there is also a schema option explore your schema right you can click on analyze schema and here you see what you have id email first name id last name ssn right so that's the schema you have with your documents you can then check for explain plan right so here you can click on execute explain so no index is available for this query you have 400 documents right then you have execution time for this 36 ms right similarly you also have one more tab which is indexes so if you are dealing with nosql like mongodb your index will be shown within this particular tab it will also show the info like what's unique then size the type and finally there is one more option which is create index if you want to create index you can follow that particular process so there is also option for validation so you can add validation tools so say you are dealing with something like let's say gis data or data for shoppers or employees users you can add such specific validation rules for their uh, private data or data that you wish to properly validate right so we have seen how to install mongodb then we set up mongodb compass then we also created database then we created collection and then finally we added documents into it